Hello everyone from Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to the CFTV preview show with myself and Kev. Today we're talking about the Fulham away game. Um, look, I mean, Kev, we've, we've just come from a win against Brighton in the Carabao Cup, a game which a lot of people expected us to lose. We managed to get a result there. I mean, how are we feeling going into this Fulham game? Let's just dive straight into it. Well, uh, we're coming up against the Fulham team that haven't scored many goals this half this season. Uh, they've lost their their main man in Mitrovic up front. Uh, they're there for the taking. Um, I think if we go into the game with the right mentality, play players in the right position, I think we could actually get the three points. But it just all depends on how we want to, how much you fight for it and how much you want it. We are the better team than them. There should be no doubts in their minds and the fans' minds that we. We can't get the win. We've, we've got. We've, it's not even a fact that we we need to get a draw. We, the, only, the only thing that we need to do in this game is get the win. It's so important. Um, with Luton and Tarrant even getting a win yesterday, they're basically one point behind us. That's how far we've fallen. We're actually in 15th place. With a win, we can climb up the table a little bit towards that mid-table kind of position. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? I mean... You look at the table, it's not exactly pretty. But, I mean, things can change sooner rather than later, Kev. I mean, I, I was of the perspective that we were obviously going to have a better start. But I have also stuck by what I've said in the sense that I do think it's going to get better. And we've seen it this week. So many big teams dropping points. Man City lost against Wolves. Crystal Palace beat Man United. Liverpool dropped points against Spurs, even though, you know, a bit of a dodgy refereeing game um, oh, well, yeah. in, in that sense. I mean, so... It's, it, there's always points up for grabs and these are the games where you really need to win because everyone else is losing. So, you know, usually we only be looking at three, four, five teams. Now we're looking at 10, 12 teams above us in the table. Um, so obviously we're relying on more teams to do badly um, than not. But I, I have to say, Kev, I mean, I, I still have faith in this team. I, I don't know about you, mate, but I'm looking at this team and I know that we've struggled to get results. I know that maybe we haven't been able to put the ball in the back of the net. That's fairly obvious. But we've saw, we saw a sense of maturity against Brighton, in my opinion. Although Sanchez made a lot of sloppy errors and we could have easily that's conceded, true. we got the job done. It wasn't pretty. And that's what you want to see a team at the end of the day. When you're struggling, go back to the basics and just win a game of football. Yeah, precisely. Um, I did watch you. Sanchez made a couple of errors passing that from the back. Uh, Fatty had a, a brilliant chance to put them put them one nil up, and we was lucky on the night. Lucky on the night, and you know this is our chance to get three three wins in the bounce. We've got Fulham and Burnley before we go into that very tricky period. We've got to get six points this week. Um, if we get four points, it's not good enough. We need a win back to back in the league just to give us confidence going into that tricky period. And like I said, Fulham are there for the taking. Haven't. You know, uh, scored many goals herself. Burnley away the week after on a Saturday. Like, come on, these are games that we've got to pick up points now. It's getting to the point where we're getting really frustrated. We're creating chances, not scoring. There's no more excuses now. We've got to go out there, get the win. Local rival, the the players will be up for it. So let's just go. Let's go and win. Let's just go with no excuses. Yeah, I mean, um, there, there, there was obviously a lot of. I was speaking with Joey Knight actually during the game, Kev. Do you know? Do you know anything about Joey Knight? Do you know who Joey Knight? Yeah, is? yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I followed him. I followed him before on, on my Instagram. Yeah, so I know he's uh, he's got his own vlogs and does stuff on YouTube. So yeah, very uh, experienced person with with the vlog. So it's a good person to to be interviewing. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I, I was actually yeah. sitting next to him for the um, for the Brighton game, and we were talking. He was asking me about Thiago Silva, right? And um, I think this is a big topic actually because. To be fair, I don't remember a time where we've ever really considered criticising Silver, and I'm still not in the sense that I would criticise him, but if we're just looking past this season, it's fairly obvious that he's probably not going to be here. Um, and if he is here, he's probably not going to be a starter. I think he's already starting to slip away. And there are fans who are saying, well, actually, we managed to get a clean sheet against Brighton um, you know, without playing him, so why not try the same thing against Fulham? Because we managed to actually win... Uh, the game against Brighton. Do you think we should drop Silver, or or can you see can you see Potts just sticking with the the man with the most experience? Um, he's made he made a massive mistake against Villa. Um, the goal that I predicted when we lost the ball, the RB going through. Um, 
and what's his face scoring the goal. So he he tends to slow down the play a little bit and he hasn't got the legs to to catch up. So it would be right to drop him, um, unfortunately. I think this RC, you know, is a bit more younger, a bit more quicker and a bit more enthusiastic. So unfortunately, you know, I think Silva, I think it's time for him to probably sit out, give him a rest and probably bring him back in the Burning game. Um, but for us to be getting on his back, the guy is a legend. He's done so much for the club. You know, he's a, he's a real leader, but, you know, he's had a couple of bad performances, so he does deserve to be dropped. Yeah, I mean, would you be starting with Colwell and, and De Sassi, a similar sort of back line? Um, yeah. But then you've you've also got to take into consideration Chilwell as well, because he's injured. But Kukure had a great game against Brian, so then you're thinking, oh, do you play him on the right? Because obviously Gusto's got a uh, one man, uh, one a one match ban. Um, so I mean, that there's there's so many questions here. But yeah. I mean, if there's one thing we've learned from Poch in in, in the most recent games, that he, he's willing to take a few risks, isn't he? And yeah. uh, I think the first risk we saw throughout the season was the trust he's been putting in, in Mudrich. We're starting to see a run of games. I'd be very surprised if if Mudrich didn't start again. I think he's really starting to come into his own. I think he was one of our best players against Aston Villa. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, that back line, uh, the thing is, right, we've been so solid. Even if you look at last season, Kev, we weren't even that bad defensively. It's just scoring the goals, isn't it? But one thing yeah. I love about Colwell and we loved about Silva as well last season, is, is the ability to just pass the ball forward. But you're right, maybe Silva does slow the play down slightly. But I mean, I don't think it's terrible, mate. You know, I don't think it's terrible. Yeah. But then you're looking at it from the short term. And I, I don't think Silva's actually going to be too bad for us this season. But I'm saying to myself, well, you might as well play players like De Sassi, players like Colwell. You know, these guys are going to be sticking around for Chelsea. They've got long-term contracts. They're on big money you know why not develop them so they can get to a higher level sooner rather than later precisely um just Colwell is probably one of the best ball center backs in the team and we say the same thing about silver going back a couple of years where most of our attacking football came through silver but i think what's happening now is team are, are, are clocking on to the weakness in the defense and it's silver if you can get men around silver and stop him playing you know, and get around him. If, we, if you can lose, if we can lose the ball. Same thing happened against Villa. We lost the ball, and you know, uh, Silver's is vulnerable to the counter attack. So we need a bit more pace in that position, and Silver doesn't bring that to you. Um, no, you're not wrong there, Kev. Yeah. So uh, one of the things it's 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 a bit of a hard choice. Maybe the Sarsi could play right back, Silver next to him, Carl Wall and Kukurella left back. I, I'd like to see Mates and start. Probably Kukurel on the right and mates and at left back. And then we go to Sarsi and Carl Wall center off. I think that would be the best uh choice for that, that back four. I don't think well. I don't think Pochettino sees Madsen as a left back though. I mean he played him as a as a right winger against yeah. um Brighton. He played him as a cam in other games in pre-season. And when he's come yeah. off the bench, it's been as a cam a lot of the time as well. So I, I can't see him starting um Matson as a left back, but then I don't think that. I don't think it's necessarily a smart thing to play Cucurella at left back when he's just had a great game at right back. So I'm like, well, if you are going to give him rhythm, at least play him in the same position, you know? So yeah, I'm but he's not, he's not, he's not a right back. It's not a right back, though, isn't he? Cucurella is he's a left back. So, okay, I understand. Well, I mean, Laqueta wasn't a left back and he was solid for us when he played there. So, I mean, I'm not saying Cucurella is going to be an Aspen Laqueta for us. So he's nowhere near as consistent. And to be honest with you, it doesn't seem like he wants to be here. But at least build on that momentum, though, don't you think? Mm, well, I'd just rather play players in the... We had this discussion last week. I'd just rather play players in a natural position, mate. Oh, okay, I understand he had a, a decent game against uh, Brighton, but just playing left-back. Just playing Mike's and left-back. Stop playing... This is when we're getting at struck. You're playing Enzo in, in the 10. You're playing Mates and as a right winger. They're not in the natural positions. So how can we expect to get the best out of these players when they're not playing in that position? Maybe, OK, you had one good game, but you could have a total disaster against Fulham. Mm. It's never known. Just, just no, that, that, that is true, man. I mean, I suppose as well, when you look at what Fulham have to offer, you know, they lost their best player, Mitrovic. He's gone to Saudi. He's gone to Al Hilal. And now they're stuck with this. It's um, Raul Jimenez, who back in yeah. the day, now, I'm not going to lie to you, he was an absolute baller. And you can right. still class him as that, but... You know, he's not as dangerous as he was since he got his head injury. 
Um, oh. Still a good striker, but I'm, I'm not really scared, if I'm honest with you, because for me, he's the type of player who needs real chances, whereas before he needed half a chance to score a goal. I can't see us con con conceding many chances to Fulham, if I'm being brutally honest. I just don't think that they have the threats that Brighton had. I know Brighton should have scored against us, but I, I can't see Fulham creating those chances. And you've got players like Willian as well. I mean, that doesn't exactly scare me, Kev. I, as far as I'm well, concerned... Adama Traore as well is someone that can get you on on, on a counter. Yeah, but yeah. They're, they're not. I don't think they're not. They're not as good as the team that was last season. And we, we went there and lost. Willian played a, a brilliant game against us. He'll be up for the game. But they're not massive threats. And this is the thing: if we can't step up and beat a team like Fulham in a local derby Monday night football, we can't go there. And okay, we're going to create chances, but it's about putting the ball in the net. We need to. We keep saying this thing, copy and paste every week. We need to build momentum, build momentum. We'll win a game and then we'll lose a game, win a game. We need to go on a consistent run because after that Burnley game, you've seen the, the run of games. You 100%, know, mate. Seen, no, you, you're, you're absolutely right. right. Um, I have to agree with we'll you on that. momentum from, from, from that. Yeah, from there. So. I mean, um, also, there's a lot of stuff about the midfield as well, mate, because I'm looking at players like Uga Chukwu. I think he deserves minutes, to be honest with you. I think Caicedo deserves minutes. I think Fernandez, if I'm being honest, based on where he's been playing as a number 10, you wouldn't say he deserves to start, especially when you've got Cole Palmer who's playing so well as a number 10. So so what are you doing with that midfield, Kev? I'd start um, Enzo in his, in, his, in his natural position in the six. Enzo is not a 10. Enzo is a, is a deep line player maker. He will... He either plays next to Ogun Chekwa or he plays next to a Calisado. Uh, I think that Ogun Chekwa played a brilliant game against Brighton. So, so why not start him and start Calisado on the bench? But Enzo has to start at his Nats position, mate. He's, he's our best midfielder. Obviously, we've been getting on his backs, but he's, like I said, coming back to what I said a bit ago. You can't expect to get the best out of players and see the best performances when you're not playing them in the proper positions. Um, Cole Palmer so has to start in ten. For a, are you going for a two in, in midfield sort of holding, and then and then a, an attack in midfield as well? Yeah, four two four two three one. Um, but with Jackson being out as well, he'd have to be Broa up top, and he's he's played half an hour all season. He hasn't had the preseason. But coming back to what I said in one of the cams in preseason, we've got two strikers. What if Jackson gets? I said it. What if Jackson gets injured? You've got Broa. He's going to come back and he's not going to be fully fit. So this is where the, the manager or the board needs to be made accountable for it, for not signing another striker um, for cover. Because Broha, he knows if he's going to even going to last the full game. So what happens then? We're going to Palmer can probably play up front as well. So you know we've got options, but yeah, it's it's, it's, it's difficult at the moment isn't it, to find that goal scorer. Hundred percent. I mean, there might be a chance we change the formation. I mean. Because if whoever's up top needs a bit more support, which we've been saying about Jackson anyway, maybe it's a case of seeing Sterling up there as well, trying to link up in, in a two with with Broha or something like that. I mean, I'm just throwing ideas out there, Kev. I'm not saying it's 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 ideal, but you know, if you want to get the best out of players who are going to score goals, you can't isolate them. And you know, it's hard enough as it is with Jackson, who's fully fit, and you've just said it yourself. Broha's played what 30 minutes of football, and he's going to be chucked straight in the deep end against Fulham, but. We might still be wrong with that. He might still not get minutes. He might be off the bench. Maybe Sterling starts up top. But then, you know, you ask the question of the wingers. You've, you've clearly got Mudrich who deserves to start. Um, you know, Palmer in behind, potentially. That's what I would like to see. But then you've got that right wing spot as well. I mean, we've, we've obviously got Nonny Madueke, but I don't know if he's going to be getting minutes because it seems like he's having a bit of a disciplinary issue um, with Poch yeah. at the moment. I mean going out and partying. I'll be honest, Kev, it's not a great look, but what do you think about it? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Um, you've got to think, yeah, you're a professional football player. Your team's struggling, yeah? You should be doing everything to prove to the manager, to the fans and to yourself that, you know, that right wing position is up for grabs. You can make that your own. So why would you go and ruin any opportunity? You know, and he's just left us short now. Um, Posh obviously dropped him for the Brighton game. Who knows if he's going to play against Fulham now? So it just goes down to mentality. If the whole team at the moment, it's just really, really stressful for us to see, you know, now Muddy Waker's out, you're going to end up playing a left-back right wing your mates. And, like, you know, we need all our players to be focused now. We need all our players 
to be on the ball and to prove to us fans that they're capable of playing for this club. So it's down to Posh, really, if he's going to bring him back. But we do need Medawake in form. We do need him down at right side because he is a, uh, a talent down at right side and he can, he can put players under pressure. So it's up to Posh with, with that one. But we do need all our players now fucking on the ball. That's it, mate. I mean, um, look, I mean, we're almost done, but I, I do want to just talk about two other things. Um, I want to touch on Robert Sanchez. Do you think that he deserves a consistent run of games? Because I'll be honest, he did look a little bit shaky against Brighton. There's a lot of people asking for Petrovic to start that game as well. So it was it was a bit of an interesting call by Poch. Um, I mean, where do you stand with Sanchez? Because he's had some great games, but he's also had a few shockers. Well, against Aston Villa, he, apart from the, the goal that they scored, where he got beat his front post by Watkins, he was outstanding. Um, against uh, Brighton, a lot of errors playing at the back. He kicked it out of touch a few times and he passed it straight to the opposing team. Personally, to start him again, um, you've gone and brought him for £25 million. You've gone and sold Kepa to Real Madrid. Is our best keeper. He's got to give him a, a run to see how he can stand up. Like I say, with a couple of bad performances, you've got to bounce back and you've got to perform. So hopefully uh, he comes back now, performs and goals. And like I said, it's all that's consistency. Um, you can be good as good as you can for 80 minutes and then go and let in a stinker. Like we've seen it with Kepa plenty of times. It's about consistency and bouncing back from bad performances. And hopefully against Fulham, he bounces back and we can get the three points. 100% man I really like Sanchez I think I I've said it before and I'll say it again I think when he's on his day and his mind's right I think his distribution is up there with the best in the world Edison uh quote me I know his distribution was absolutely crap against Brighton but listen um when it's good it's good and uh you know I've never seen Kepper or any other keeper at Chelsea to be brutally honest with you kick a ball like Sanchez so that's the reason I'm saying it because I don't the way it floats in the air, mate, off a goal kick. I saw him against Liverpool. I saw him kick the ball to Sterling directly on the chest. It wasn't even looping. It was just it was just through the air. It was gorgeous, mate. So when he gets it right, I mean, it is it is it is world class. I will go that far and saying it. But I mean, they're welcome to have their opinion on Sanchez. Um, but I mean, Kev, just just to finish off, mate, let's uh, let's get your predictions on the game. I mean, I'll be honest, you hit the nail on the head against Villa. And I hope you're right this time, but I hope it's a slightly more positive prediction. Honestly, I could I could see us getting the three points tomorrow. Um, oh, it's just, it's, it's just because we follow them. They're, they're unpredictable. They haven't really got a style. They like to keep the ball, but I, I don't think they're gonna they're gonna want to play against us. And the teams that play against us are the teams that we're more likely to to win against. Um, I don't think they're they're gonna be a sitting back team. Um, so. I'd say 1-0, Charles, tomorrow. Mate, a win's a win. I'll tell you what, a couple of weeks ago, Kev, I would have said, even if you said 1-0, that's a bit pessimistic. But a win is a win, mate. I don't care how we do it. Just get the three points. And also, guys, I just want to say this. You've got to respect the commitment from me and Kev today because, look, Kev's, Kev's you know, taking time out of his day to come and record this show. I'm in the gym, right? I'm in the gym in, in a cycling studio, <laughs> and I'm still recording this. So, come on, guys. You've got to respect it, haven't you? Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, so 1-0, so Kev, that's what we're settling with. 1-0, 1-0, Charles. Bro, I'm not even going to predict it, man. I'm going to leave it with you because I like it. Positive vibes. I can see yeah. I can see a positive result as well, if I'm being honest, but I'm not going to give a score. If, if I had to say something, I'd probably say 1-0 as well. But it is a bit boring, isn't it? But we're not exactly yeah. the most exciting team in the world. So it, it's not it's not fair. Just, just, just go and get three ones on the bounce. We've got we beat Brighton, we beat Fulham, and you know, I'm sure we'll beat Burnley on Saturday. So that's three wins on the bounce. That goal is to show that there is some encouragement encouraging signs going into this difficult period. So let's get the fucking win on Monday and then let's go Saturday and get another one. That's it, mate. But listen, guys, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, like and subscribe. Um, comment down below if you agree or disagree with any of the points that we have made today. And thank you for watching if you've got this far up the Chelsea, and we will see you very, very soon.